Have you ever thought about where the line is between depression and some more serious mental illness? Well, the line is a lot more fuzzy than you think. And unfortunately, we might actually be doing damage simply by walking on eggshells and not wanting to talk about mental health when we have the opportunity to fix it. That's the main theme around the book we're talking about today. This book will change your mind about mental health by Nathan Filer. Let's see what it's all about. How are you going guys? Welcome back to Walk It Off. I'm your host, Nathan, and today we're talking about Nathan Filer's This Book Will Change Your Mind About Mental Health. And I have to say, I was immediately sucked in by a bit of a clickbaity title. Um, not to say this book is in any way, shape or form bad, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it definitely opened my mind about mental health. And I'd never really thought about the more serious aspects of mental health apart from depression and how easy it is for a person to slip from depression into something more serious like schizophrenia. Now, for those of you that don't know, Nathan Filer used to actually be a mental health nurse. He used to work in the wards at an, what is effectively an asylum and he used to have to uh, help medicate some of the more severe mental health patients that were housed there. And he kind of traveled a path where he went from kind of wondering how he could better help people and help his patients that he was surrounded by. And he, he used that as a basis to go into more of a research role because he kind of felt really, really helpless to actually be able to help the people that he was in charge of caring for. And he highly suspected that there was also a lot of malpractice happening in that field in that some of the uh, doctors were quite callous towards the patients that he had to see alongside them. And a lot of them were just pushing whatever drug they were paid to actually push on their patients, which is a real tragedy because it seems to be that people are more interested in selling pills than they are actually fixing the underlying problems that cause the issues in the first place, which um, I'm sure you've heard me talk about. There, there can be a great range of things happening in, per, in somebody's life that could lead them into mental illness. And where, as I've said before, the, the, the saying goes, there but, f but for a flip of a coin go I. And yeah, it can take the slightest push when somebody is in a really toxic environment to make them tragically fall down into uh, full-blown mental health issues um, that are significantly more severe than just a prolonged depression. So one of the really interesting things that I liked about this book is that Nathan goes into, and I'm sorry, it's gonna trip me up because my name is Nathan as well, but uh, yeah, Nathan goes into the history of the mental health uh, medical profession and it's kind of very murky, blurry past in that, you know, we stem through almost this kind of highly uh, religious uh, kind of top-down methodology into Jungian psychoanalytics and um, Freud and things like that and how we've kind of come up out of that where kind of almost everything was, uh, okay, you may have been sexually abused as a child and therefore you're repressing these memories. We're kind of coming back up out the other side of that and kind of looking at things much more holistically and looking at things such as the phenomenon of epigenetics. And if you don't know what that is, essentially you have genes which will do absolutely nothing until they are triggered by an environmental factor. So you might have a proclivity towards depression, 
but you never experience it because you don't, you've never lived through a toxic enough environment to actually trigger the genes that would then cause the depression. And yeah, it was really, really eye-opening just how many people have, they're kind of right on the cusp of a mental health issue. And the people that are around them kind of feel like they're walking on eggshells and they don't want to talk about it, just mainly because they're scared about talking about it. But because they don't talk about it, it never gets brought to light that the person is having severe issues. Um, there's a couple of stories in here. Um, one about a younger woman that um, I think goes into kind of like a psychotic breakdown, but you can see how she becomes more and more socially isolated from her friends and family until it goes into almost like a full psychosis where um, she is like thinking that people are sending her signals through the TV and she ends up planning on bombing this place. But um, yeah, she uh, gets treatment before she does anything incredibly serious that you could not come back from and um, would have ended up in criminal trouble. And the other story that I found quite funny is like a family that gets torn apart where the mum uh, suspects the dad of infidelity but there's nothing going on and she gets just more and more suspicious until it fully turns into a complete psychosis where she thinks she's receiving messages through a photo of the Virgin, a statue of the Virgin Mary, and it completely destroys the family. The, um, the dad ends up leaving, and that plunges the uh, mother and the children into extreme poverty. But as you can imagine, her mental health issues just, that's just the tip of the iceberg and it kind of, that's where it really starts badly snowballing. And because the, t the children are too young to understand it, nothing ever gets done to, until the point where you, the mum actually ends up in a, a mental asylum and uh, needs some pretty serious treatment. But in the end, it kind of spurs on one of the children to do a lot of research around the mental health issues, just so she can help her mother. And I think the mum ends up dying um, pretty quickly after they end up treating her mental illness. Um, because of the mental illness and the social isolation, she ended up living in a house that was kind of infested with mold and then that led to carcinogenic effects and she dies pretty young, which is a very huge tragedy because most of it could have been prevented if she had the right help early on and she never received it, so. Um, one of the things that uh, Nathan Filer goes into which I really quite enjoyed was just how varied mental health issues can actually be, um, ranging from uh, just mild to prolonged depression to psychotic breaks and schizophrenia and uh, through that people starting to hallucinate things and uh, hearing voices that aren't there quite like the section at the young man uh, who unfortunately ends up taking his own life but uh, you kind of get a really good um, retrospective look at how he ended up where he was when it started. It's kind of like, uh, I'm not sure if you've had this phenomenon but like if you, if you live close to your neighbours and you can hear them talking uh, about something but you kind of can't hear what so your brain kind of fills in the blanks which is a uh, evolutionary uh, it has benefits to it but being suspicious of people when they're whispering is an evolutionary benefit that uh, has been bestowed upon us but it can become maladaptive very quickly and like I said this guy starts developing from so he starts filling in the blanks of what he thinks the neighbors are talking about until it fully actually develops into full-blown voices in his head that aren't his. And uh, yeah, there's some 
Like I said, there's some tragic tales like that found throughout, but you'll get a much greater insight into the, just the varying nature of all the different mental health issues that actually exist and can really be prevented or you can be managed if they're caught early, but will just completely snowball and turn into a feedback loop of social isolation and deteriorating mental health. And uh, yeah, like I said, there is a lot of treatment that you can get, ranging from uh, talking therapist to meditation and uh, if needed, actual uh, medication. So one of the most interesting parts of the book um, is Nathan talking about an experiment, reasonably recent in terms of scientific history, but he talks about how to test how good other mental health professionals were diagnosing and treating mental illness, a bunch of psychoanalysts and psychologists actually got themselves committed and then as soon as they were actually in the hospital, stopped pretending to have symptoms and seeing how long it would actually take them to be released from said hospital. And some of them were actually stuck in there for months at a time. And I found that incredibly interesting and it really is a testament to just uh, how much variation and how much it kind of comes down to almost the opinion of the doctor on the day. I think they do talk about um, someone who was at a mental health conference amongst his peers and he actually scoffed at a diagnosis only to then be kind of politely tapped on the shoulder and told uh, that was actually your diagnosis that you were laughing about. So, uh, yeah, I very, very highly recommend this one right here. This book will change your mind about mental health by Nathan Filer. Um, it's not a particularly scientifically jargon dense book, so it is easily accessible for the layperson, and it's got a very kind of personal, like a lot of it is told from, a, from his perspective as he goes about researching the topics of mental health. And yeah, I could not recommend this any more. Like I said, it's probably not, it's not quite as finessed as say like Johan Hari's work on similar topics, but it's got a lot of the same flavor to it and I think you'll really, really enjoy it. It'll give you a much better insight into some of the more severe mental health issues and things that can be done if you can catch it early enough. And there is hope out there for you. If anyone that you know or you are yourself experiencing any mental health issues, please don't be scared to go and talk to a professional. I was for a long time and I can honestly say I didn't really start fixing anything properly until I did. So yeah, you owe it to yourself, guys. But yeah, I very highly recommend this one. You should definitely pick up. This book will change your mind about mental health by Nathan Filer. If you have read this one already, let's chat about it in the comments below as there's a lot here to talk about. And I wanna know what you thought about it. If you haven't, go check it out. It is available on Audible or in soft cover. And uh, yeah, you will not regret reading this one. So until next time, I'm Nathan, this has been Walk It Off with uh, hashtag read this, another great book about mental health. I'll see you next time guys. Until then, go outside, get better and be awesome. And I have to go up that big bastard of a hill to get back to my car, so I have to get cracking. See you guys.